Well, it's uh, so good to see you guys come in here this evening to celebrate uh, Christmas together. Uh, what a joyous season it is, and I hope that uh, the songs that we sing today can draw your hearts and your attention again to praise and glorify our great God and Savior who has done amazing and incredible things for us. So uh, why, don't, why don't we start by singing Angels from the Realms of Glory. Isaiah 60, verses 1 to 5, Isaiah says this to the people of Israel as he's speaking of their God and their God who will come. He says this, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness, it covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light. Kings to the brightness of your dawn, lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar. Your daughters are carried on the hip. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. Isn't that an incredible thought? As we rise and as the light of the, the life has come to us, why don't we stand and sing joyful, joyful, we adore you.
guess that was the last verse you guys had. So we'll stop there. <laughs> Sorry about that. John, John, John chapter 1, verses 9 to 14. The Apostle John has this to say of the coming uh, Lord, and I just thought it fit, it fit well with the, uh, the dawn of a new light that Pastor Darrell spoke of this morning. It says this, The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's sing, What Child Is This? sing the first Noel. where they 
on that song before Pastor Daryl comes up to share uh, devotional. So, angels we have heard on high. prayer. We, Lord, we just praise you and we glorify you today. And Lord, as these songs have, have sang about the wonder of your love, the amazing song that we get to join in that the angels sang and rejoiced when Christ came on that day so many years ago. And we just praise you and we glorify you for that. Lord, I just uh, thank you that we can hear of this story and hear of this uh, from your word and just open up our hearts uh, and guide Pastor Darrell as he uh, comes to speak with us here as well. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm not going to preach, so I'm just going to put you at ease right off the bat. I just actually want to tell you a story, give you a chance to uh, rest your, your voices and uh, tell you a story about a, a man I heard about who was, uh, he was not a Scrooge, he was a kind and decent man, a good man. He was generous with his family and, he, uh, and his dealings with other people. But he didn't believe in that incarnation stuff that uh, they talk about in church, you know, at Christmas time. It just didn't make any sense to him. And so to be honest with himself, he didn't pretend that he uh, understood it. He just, you know, it just wasn't his thing. It just seemed a bit strange, a little hard to swallow this Jesus story about God coming to earth as a man. And so he said to his wife, he said, I'm truly sorry, honey, I, I don't want to distress you, but I'm not going to church this Christmas Eve. He didn't want to feel like a hypocrite. 
He'd much rather stay at home. He said he would wait up for them. And so he stayed home as the rest of the family drove off to church. Shortly after the car drove off, the snow began. And he went to the window and he watched the flurries come down and it got heavier and heavier. And he went and he sat down by the fire in his chair, began to read his newspaper. And a few minutes later it started, he heard this, he heard this thudding sound. And then another thud and then another. And he thought someone was throwing snowballs at his house, so he went outside to investigate. And here he found a flock of birds huddled by the window. They must have been a, a bit confused and got caught up in this storm and in a desperate search for shelter. They, they saw the reflection in the window of his uh, big picture window and they just flew right in and hit their heads, I guess, and fell down kind of dazed. And he thought, well, I can't let these poor little creatures just lay here and freeze. So he thought he could get them into the barn where they held the, the kids' ponies. That would be a better shelter for them, and he would just direct the birds into the barn. So quickly he got on his coat, and he put his boots on, and he trudged through the deep snow. He opened up the barn door, turned the light on, but the birds wouldn't come in. So he thought he would get some food to entice them. He went into the house, and he got some, some breadcrumbs, and he sprinkled them in the snow, and he made a path all the way to the door, had the light on. Birds wouldn't come. So he was a bit dismayed. The birds ignored the breadcrumbs, and soon they continued to, to flap around helplessly in the snow. He tried to catch them. He tried shooing them into the barn. He waved his arms, but instead they kind of scattered in every direction. And then he realized they were afraid of him. Hmm. So he thought to re he, he reasoned that they probably thought he was a, a terrifying creature. If only I could think of some way to let them know that they can trust me, that I'm not going to hurt them, that I'm actually here to help them. But how? Because if he made any move, they got frightened and they would just run away. They wouldn't follow him. So he thought, well, if only I could be a bird. If I could be a bird, I would mingle with them. I would speak their language. I would tell them not to be afraid. Then I could show them the way to safely get into the barn where it's warm and safe. But I would have to be one of them so I could see and hear and understand. And at that moment, the church bells began to ring. And the sound reached his ears above the sound of the wind. And he stood there listening to the bells as they chimed the Christmas song, O come all ye faithful. And then he sank to his knees in the snow. Now he knew why God had come to earth. He had come to become like us in order to help us. He had come to speak our language so we would understand him and he would show us the way to safety. He had come down so that we could find real and lasting peace. At Christmas, we celebrate that Jesus humbled himself and came to this earth like one of us. And that's worthy of celebrating. Family and friends and food and gatherings and gifts and singing, that's all good. But if we don't understand why he came, we've completely missed the point. In the Bible, there's a book called Philippians. In chapter 2, it tells us why Jesus came to earth as a baby. It says, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death even death on a cross. Why did Jesus come? He came to die. Because God is just, he determined that we have to die for the punishment of our sin. Sin is saying to God, I don't need you. Sin is disobeying God's guidelines for living. It's failing to fulfill the purpose that God has for your life. And Jesus willingly decided that he would take our punishment even though he never sinned. He allowed himself to be executed on the cross 
and thus provided a way to save us, making him our savior. Jesus came to earth to take the punishment that we deserved. And three days after his execution, God raised him back to life. And Romans 10, 9 says, if you believe in his death and resurrection and you submit your life to him, not only does he give you eternal life in paradise, he will give you peace, joy, and purpose in life now. And I would encourage you to make that decision to follow him. Get connected to a Bible teaching church. I think that's a great way to be encouraged in your faith and to grow in your love for Jesus. So what do we celebrate at Christmas? Jesus, the Son of God, coming to earth in human form. Why do we celebrate Christmas? That's a more important question. Because he loves us. He provided a way to save us from the punishment of hell and instead spend eternity with him. The cradle is the first step to the cross. So glad you chose to come and celebrate with us this evening, and uh, we're going to end with one last song. I'll ask uh, Pastor Daniel and Joanna if they'll lead us in that song, and I think you might need your candles for this one. Yeah, we'll, we'll close by uh, singing Silent Night, and uh, actually I'll call the ushers forward, or two of them, or a few of them, to start, uh, well, Darcy, yeah, and then uh, Connie or Gord, either one of you guys want to, or Dave, we'll start the lighting on that side, on that side, and then I'll get you guys just to pass the light along with you as you go, and it, the purpose of this exercise is to symbolize the light that came when Jesus came to earth that many years ago, and how that light continues to spread into the hearts of all those who hear and receive and accept his word. So that's kind of the imagery that we get with this candlelight. If anybody is uh, missing a, or not have a candle and they would like one, we have a few extras here. Gord's got the box. So I, sh I think I see Shelton. There's a few over there. So yeah, just uh, keep your hands up until you get noticed or a jump or something. I don't know. But Side over there. Just a quick reminder, as you're lighting the candles, the candle that's not lit tips towards the flame. If you tip the, the candle that's burning, it'll drip wax on the floor. We don't want that, so. stand.
our Lord and Savior. We just praise you and we thank you again. That you came, and Lord, what a gift it was. And I just pray as, as we see this light, the symbol of the light that you came to be for us, a light that you brought into the world. And Lord, as it continues to spread through your church, I pray that we as a church, as faithful bearers of the light in our own hearts, we continue to spread that good news and spread that hope wherever we go. We just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You can uh, blow your candles out. Maybe just careful not to blow too hard. A little wax to your, into the hair of the person in front of you.